news, ladies and gentlemen. Isaiah Thomas is now on the Dallas Mavericks, okay? So, according to Sham Sharani, free agent guard Isaiah Thomas plans to sign with the Dallas Mavericks, sources tell the Athletics and Stadium. Thomas is expected to join the team in Sacramento tonight. So, before we continue today's video, I don't know if there was honey, uh, not honey, mustard on my lips. I was just eating hot dogs. But either way, I want to hear your thoughts down below. Do you guys agree with me? Isaiah Thomas has proven that he still has value as a 10 to 15 minute a night spark plug off the bench and i could see him having a very successful time here in dallas okay and we'll talk about why i believe this and why i think it really it will come to fruition because look he's really in the best position he can be for the point he's in his career and it's setting himself up to be kind of a six man for an nba team okay and i think he could have a lot of success in doing so so let's talk about this Mavericks team and like talk about who's entirely out. Willie Colley Stein is out. You know, McLaughlin's also out. Luka Doncic seems like he's going to be out. He's been in health safety protocol since the 22nd. Trey Burke as well. Tim Hardaway Jr. and Maxi Kleber. Okay, which means going into tonight's game, the team's lineup is probably going to be Jalen Bronson, Reggie Bullock, Dorian Finney-Smith, Christoph Porzingis, and Dwight Powell with Moses Brown, Josh Green, Frank Nelikina, Isaiah Thomas, Marquise Chris, and Sterling Brown, and Brandon Knight rounding out the bench, okay? People are forgetting Brandon Knight made his way back into the NBA as well. And look, I love me some Brandon Knight. Don't get me wrong. If Brandon Knight can come here and put up some points, I, I want either Isaiah Thomas or Brandon Knight to have some success. I know Isaiah Thomas scored nine points a game on 30% from the field, 22% from three, and wasn't anything. But he, he has the ability to be that spark plug. So tonight going into the game, you guys better be looking at Isaiah Thomas or my man, Brandon Knight. I've heard... Like, now that I know Brandon Knight's on this team, I'm so excited because I don't know about y'all, but Brandon Knight was electric when I first started watching the NBA. And I didn't first start watching the NBA when he came in. He joined the Detroit Pistons in, like, 11. That was probably, like, my third or fourth year watching the NBA. Isaiah Thomas, you know, being on the Boston Celtics, he's always been a very fun guy to watch. He has a lot of skill. Can't really play defense. But... If he can come out and score efficiently for this team, backing up Jalen Bronson, I could really see him having a role on this team, being a scorer off the bench, okay? Because this is a team that, look, Trey Burke, if I, if I would be honest, Trey Burke this season hasn't really performed, okay? And what I mean by that is just in this month, he's only played, I think, a handful of games but Trey Burke's only averaging like eight points 33 percent from three you know three assists two rebounds not even a steal a game if Isaiah Thomas can put up better numbers in his 10 game 10 day sample he could take Trey Burke's minutes like I'm being dead serious okay and I always forget Trey Burke was like the ninth overall pick like I always forget that and then he didn't he played for Dallas twice now He's played with Dallas twice. But look, Trey Burke got some skill, okay? And if Trey Burke is struggling right here, I think Isaiah Thomas could really take that skill. Like, because they're they have similar skills. They're just small shooters, okay? Like Trey Burke's 6'1 or six foot flat. And Isaiah Thomas is 5'9. So really I think it's Brandon Clark, Isaiah Thomas, and Trey Burke fighting for that spot. Like Isaiah Thomas and it. Brandon Clark are going to fight for Trey Burke's minutes. And if Trey Burke doesn't come back or if he gets squarely beat out by those guys, I would not be surprised by that, you know? And that's where I'm sitting. I'm like, damn, okay, let's see what happens. Because, I mean, this is all very, very exciting. Because, let's be real, everyone wants to see an underdog story go right, a comeback story. Everybody loves a good comeback. Nobody doesn't like a good comeback. Like, if you don't like a good comeback... What are you, a masochist then? Because that's just not having any fun. How, how are you having any fun if you 
you don't like underdogs underdogs are the best i always want the little guy to win i always want david to win f goliaths you know that's my thought am i stupid for thinking that or i feel like that's a reasonable thought i feel like i'm having pretty pretty reasonable thought process right there let me hear your guys' thoughts maybe i'm wrong maybe i am wrong that's basically it